this episode of Grassroots Garage, we have a very special car indeed, Nan's GT Falcon. I was bought new for her in 72 and it's uh, been a treasured family member since then. Welcome to Grassroots Garage, this is a beautiful GT Falcon, it's Anthony's car. Anthony, thanks for your time. No worries, thanks Pete. Mate, tell us about your car. It's a 1972 uh, XA GT sedan, technically is my car, but I re like to refer to it as my nan's car. It was bought new for her in 1972 and um, I'm just the custodian of it, it's a, it's a treasured family member. Isn't it? It's a beautiful car. Take us right back and, and tell us from the very beginning of this car. My, my nan and my grandfather had a had an amp hole service station in Orange in, New, in uh, country New South Wales and, and uh, in 1971 uh, they finally turned a decent enough profit that they could uh, upgrade Nan's old XP Falcon and uh, my, my Nan chose a, a GT Falcon, she was an Alan Moffat fan. Uh, my grandfather agreed on the, the condition that uh, it was his choice of colour, so he went to the Ford dealer, Rural Motors, and uh, went to order one. And the, the dealership told him that he was too late, that the, uh, they only had what they had in stock. And uh, they subsequently tried to get him to buy their uh, yellow demonstrator and uh, he politely declined. I went and bought my Nan a six-cylinder Monaro, which was probably a silly decision for him. But uh, six months later, Nan harassed him to the point where uh, she went back, picked the XAGT up in the colour that she wanted, and uh, the rest is history. We still have it today. Thanks, Nan. <laughs> what a legend. <laughs> First time I got pulled over in this, I can always remember the copper from, Mar from it was in Simon Axe too. Oh yeah. The copper yeah. said, what are you up to? I said, oh nothing, just driving my nan's car. And he laughed, he went smart ass. I said, oh no, it's my nan's car. And we were just having a laugh and then Jake blowing the bag, blew in the, the bag and I hadn't eaten the drink. He goes, can mm. you pull to the side, mate? Oh Christ, here we here go. We go. This big serious looking AFP dude gets out, big old bloke. Have I done something wrong? He goes, no, he goes, but I have one of these, the highway patrol car in 1972. Oh, I stayed there for an hour and a half talking <laughs> about the story about how he had one as a highway patrol car and he loved it and this was a cool car. And yeah. Thanks, mate. Give me the thumbs up as I left. Let's go to your car history. Tell us about your first car. Oh, my first car was a 1980 uh, Ford Cortina four cylinder manual, which me and my dad restored. I had a friend of ours panel shop, uh, John Salukovic Smash Repairs at Orange. Nice. We did the work on it ourselves yeah, and yeah. painted it, and uh, and and it was it was a fun mode of transport for the uh, 12 months or 18 yeah. months that I had it and upgraded. But uh, I've always had Fords. Uh, I don't think I've ever uh, strayed away too far from the badge. Had mm -hmm. a couple of Volkswagens, had a Holden that I won't tell anyone about, but uh, <laughs> but mostly have all been Fords and uh, all the V8 variety, most of them anyway. So was that like uh, I guess it's one of those things where like. When I say I've always loved cars, I didn't really have much of a choice. Did you ever have a choice about Ford or you just... No, nah. I was brought home in the back seat of, a, of an XDS pack, <laughs> V8, 351 V8. And, and in the 80s and 90s, my dad had a really good show car. It was a multiple summon at trophy winner mm. um, and an XD Falcon. And, uh, and I've still got a love for XD Falcons. Probably my next choice of uh, Falcon other than an XA. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I had no choice. We, we, were, we were blue in the blood. My nan was a Ford supporter. My uncles were all Ford supporters. My dad uh, definitely taught me I didn't have a favourite colour Power Ranger growing up or mm -hmm. I wasn't a Ninja Turtles fan but I certainly knew who Dick Johnson and John yeah, Bauer yeah. were and, uh, yeah. and, and I still still today uh, have unfortunately you know, bred it into my kids that uh, they go for Dick Johnson racing or nothing at the moment nice. but, but they're a good team to support at the time. Yeah, I, I remember Craig Lowndes because I was neither Ford nor Holden I was sort of ambivalent to that and I remember Craig Lowndes was dominating for Holden but he was a Ford man, wasn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, he's you got a Cortina I mean? as a car. Yeah, and, it's yeah. a, and, and it's funny, well, I guess he he, he he come to the good side for a little while, but, uh, you know, Roland lured him back to Holden. But, yeah. You know, yeah, as, as a kid, there was Dick Johnson and nothing else. So it was Car 17, nice. or, or that was it. And, uh, and and still to this day, I'm, I'm still the diehard number 17 supporter, I'm sure. My, Love that. My wife cringes when the V8's on every time. 
<laughs> Love that. Um, okay, so so take me from Cortina. Give us a couple of highlights of the car history along the way. Uh, so the Cortina, I, I sold it and I bought a... Uh, well, my dad told me that I should buy a ute and I bought a Falcon ute, which I, I hated. Mm. And uh, lucky for me at the time, I was working fitting car stereos at the local auto barn at Orange and had a clear shot of the uh, Ford dealer's yard. And, and for me, uh, 1998, everyone hated an AU Falcon, but uh, I can remember walking to the Ford dealership and uh, taking a bit of a shine to it and putting my name down on, a, on an AU Fairmont Kia. Mm. And everyone thought I was mad, um, but I lowered it, put a big set of wheels on it. It was a pretty cool car. I liked it. I actually sold it. It's one of the few cars I've actually sold and made a profit on. Oh, nice. Um, thanks, yeah. Ben Zook. Yeah, he bought nice. it off me. Big shout um, out to Ben. He's a, he's a legend of a bloke. He, um, <laughs> yeah, then, then we went to there. Then I bought an XR8 Sprint at the time that I'd that I bought this car and I needed to run around to drive every day and bought a really low kilometre EDXR8 Sprint which was just supposed to be my run around ended up with a respray and chrome wheels and a big stereo I was in car audio at the time and I won a couple of summer nights standoffs with that mm. um, so I had that then then I had a TS50 Falcon so I had one of the AU oh, Series nice. 3 TS50s the, the blue, blue yeah had yeah, a blueprint nice, one nice. Um, and it was a really really nice car we sold that to buy a house <laughs> um, but this car's sort of been around for all of them. It's seen most of the mm, most of my mm. motoring attributes. But yeah. I've had a couple of a couple of really good standout Falcons amongst the amongst the time. Nice. Generally, always own always own Falcons or some some form of V8 Ford anyway. Mm. So I'm loving at the moment the thought of getting my hands on a and a um, on a super clean original AU Falcon and putting that in the shed because I reckon they're one of those cars that at the time they were universally disliked. Yeah, but oh. now. They're starting to come a bit They're of a They're starting comeback. to come on, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had three AU Falcons. I've had the AU Fairmont Gear that I bought in 99. I've had a TS50 that I that I bought pretty much brand new. It was maybe a couple of months old. Um, and I had a really neat red AU3 XR8, which my wife hated. It had a big cam, short shifter, all the stuff in it. She drove it for a while and uh, and subsequently found out how fast it was. But uh, I've still got a soft spot for AU Falcons. And I reckon that too, that uh, that if you can find a clean one, that they're worth putting mm -hmm. away in the shed. Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's so many people out there that have trashed them and abused them and abused and that a good one's pretty hard to find. So Absolutely. Yeah, I'm one of those weirdos that likes an AU Falcon. So. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> CD, but I suppose it's more appropriate. It's got an Elton John, isn't it? Oh, hello. No. <laughs> oh, what have we, what have <laughs> we got? What you got, got, a bit of, got a bit of sherbet. Sherbet, all right, all right. A bit of T-Rex. This one's a bit dead, American Pie. That's always a... Sick. Chuck a, chuck a bit of sherbet in, I reckon. See, we all, I always use this one because Rock. It was when I was living at Penrith. It was Rock of the West. Oh, so nice. Was, yeah. Was a, yeah. Classic A track. Was that like an optional extra at the it time? It was, it was the only option they bought on the car. <laughs> nice. Manual. Manual. I was not expecting that. That's was, even rarer again, isn't it? It was bare. Well, there was 153 made in this colour. Yeah. 50, 55 with black trim. I don't know how many manuals, but it would have been a. I don't know, but it wasn't a real super popular colour option. Most of these had the beige trim in them, so. Got ya. My nan's 77 and she was here the other week and she tried to drive it. She couldn't couldn't even turn the steering wheel in it these days. Uh, so yeah. She doesn't get to. Uh, Take get her for the, some passenger doesn't laps? Get to, yeah, took her for some passenger laps. Nice. Was she loving it? Yeah, at That's speed sick. too, so it's always good. Yeah. Mate, I love stories like that, eh? Like, keeping it in the family, you know? Like, like a nan fighting, fighting yeah. to keep it, you know? That's mad. Yeah, as I said, she still loves the car. She'd still, dri she'd still drive it if she could turn the steering wheel and it That's makes me, uh, it makes me laugh. I had someone, actually a funny story, um, a guy in Penrith owns my old white one, the original white one that I bought. Yep. And um, he offered to buy this off me and offered me a fairly substantial amount of money for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I went and said to my dad, oh, I've been offered all this money for it. She said, well, if you've been offered it, you should sell it. <laughs> um, but as she said it, there was the tear the tear creep up in her eye. I, yeah. couldn't, I couldn't take it. As soon as she, started, she had the bit of a tear, I couldn't, uh, couldn't sell it. Oh, if you want to 
Yeah, Vic Man got the shot. Yeah, so I'll do, I'll probably just copy and paste the voiceover I did for them and just go like, yeah, we're all about, you know, like, guys who are working in the industry but also genuinely enjoy cars, you know what I mean? Like, are about all of that. Yeah, I mean, you could try that, but as I keep telling you, Pete, I'm the one who does the voiceovers around here, mate. Anthony owns the Jack's franchise in Foster, and here's what we think we know about getting your car worked on. We think you're much better off to go to a shop run by a true car enthusiast. So off the back of that, if you're up that way and you need a fair price on a good set of tyres or some mechanical work, go see Anthony. Or don't. We're not the boss of you. No. I'm chasing this. Are they? There's a heap of these. These are probably... I, do, I see these things all the time. Oh, yeah, man. I love them, man. It's a good old car, don't we? Isn't it? I had an open day three months ago. Yeah. I had this parked at the front. Nice. That's funny, I, I had this guy turn up the other week in, oh, in a John Goss special. Oh, it's nice. a shame, I tried to get hold of him to see if he wanted to come along. Yeah. And he's owned it for a long time. Oh, nice. And a very a very well used John Goss special. Very nice. It's, uh, I, I looked at it and went, wow, it's seen some better days. But he's, uh, he loves it, tows a caravan to back us with it still every oh, year. That's it's, the best. it's just a cool old car. Yeah, see, I, I, I've never been to Gosford Classic Car Museum. Yeah. I went to the Peterson Museum in. Um, oh, how good is that? Know, it's amazing, but I want to see him driven. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's one thing to sit him still, and it's almost I don't know. I get a funny feeling when I'm I, I, when I look at him parked in a in a, in a shop like yeah. that. I want to see him out driven. So I don't think a John Goss special could look more beautiful than beat up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, look, <laughs> it's I, driven. You know? I, I still say this. A lot of these guys that are buying all these, you know, HSV W one W ones and. You know, GTF Falcons and just and not registering them and not detailing, them, not driving them away. I, you know, I wouldn't want. I'd want to buy one in 30 years' time that's had a history that someone's exactly. driven. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And 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 so what it's got to dick. That's part of the story, you know. Like oh, for I've, me, I've got a mate of mine with a W427. Oh, nice. Um, if you'd looked at it, you would cry. Oh. Um, it's done 175,000 k's. Yeah. It's had every history done. The front bars falling off it. Um, but he's driven it through his vineyards and oh, nice. all those, but given it a hard time, but driven it as he would have driven anything else, you know. He's got a HQ GDS in his shed that he owned brand new, that he's done the same thing, you know. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. I, I like them when they've had a bit of love. You know, it's funny, we all talk about the rivalry and Ford and Holden and, you know, I was brainwashed, still am brainwashed Ford. <laughs> but I still I still laugh. I had a guy come into work the other day with a HQ SS and I, and I said to him, it's genuinely a car that I would love to have in my shed. I'd love to have a, you know, a Charger, this, and an HQ SS, oh, all 72, yeah. 72 builds, you know, yeah. they were, they were but it, really, it really was a golden era in Australian motoring. Wasn't it? Definitely. I give you an unlimited budget. What does this look like? Pretty much, probably how you see it. Mm -hmm. I was um, that might be the answer. <laughs> I'd, I'd like it. I'd like to restore it one day, and I've made this promise to my kids that, that when we've we've just purchased a local business here in Foster, and, and and when the time's right, and we've got a bit of money in the bank, we, I want to, I want to concourse restore it. Mm -hmm. Still pretty much how it is. I still like the ride height. Still like the wheels. Mm -hmm. I'd like love to put a solid cam in it and build it so it looks a bit chunkier, but mm -hmm. unlimited. Yeah, I don't think it would change too much other than a, a, pro, a, a fresher paint job and a, and a big solid cam that might be that might that might pull me up. In this giant shed on your imaginary and limited budget what have we got parked next to it oh i think if you're a diehard ford man it would be the exact same car as the phase four gt phase four, I, yeah, that, that'd yeah. be the first of my choice yeah um probably a, a, an xa gt coupe um oh what else would be there definitely an xd falcon have mm -hmm. to be an xd and an mm -hmm. xe sp i'd love love one of each mm -hmm. uh, i think there's a pretty big running theme here maybe a porsche maybe a if, porsche, I, if yeah. I was going to stray a porsche like maybe a, a volkswagen beetle something like that like a 911 or like a like a gt3 or an old school 911 nah, i think it has to be an old school 911 nice, yeah, so there yeah. but a beetle has a soft spot in my heart i worked yeah. for a volkswagen dealer for a, mm -hmm. for, a, for a while and grew a bit of a soft spot for that brand too so you know there'd be a bit of a weird and wonderful collection in nice. there I think. love that
so that's it for this beautiful GT Falcon. Anthony, thanks for your time. Thanks, Pete. Legend. I'm calling it. Done. <laughs> <laughs>